All right, so uh, back in part one of a history of musician, I uh, talked a little bit about musician, and then I turned back the clock a little bit to talk about the emergence of the genre of music education gaming through Rocksmith, a 2011 educational gaming product released by Ubisoft, and then how this was actually foreshadowed three years earlier in 2008 by a tech demo called Guitar Rising, and also by, in 2010, when Harmonix released Rock Band 3. You could say the success of these pro projects was in some ways a logical corollary of the, the overlap that exists between gaming and skill building. The overlap being the part where you build skills and you enjoy it. Gaming and skill building are two different processes that both involve learning new skills and improving old skills. They both involve embedding patterns into your muscle memory, and embedding patterns into your intuitions, and they both work best when persistent and consistent practice takes place. When this persistent and consistent practice involves spaced repetition in order to help you improve most effectively. This all applies to skill building, such as learning musical instruments. It also applies to gaming. That overlap may just be dynamite. So in 2011, when Rocksmith came out, it was kind of revolutionary in that sense. Now, it could be argued that uh, Rocksmith back in 2011 was limited uh, by how much of its design was inherited from its predecessor, Guitar Hero. For one thing, Rocksmith was a console video game designed for gamers. It required a console and even required the purchase of the exclusive Rocksmith audio adapter for your guitar. For another thing, uh, playing the game was all about the player learning how to read, quote-unquote, a kind of music notation that exists nowhere outside the gaming world. You know, the notes come to you, but they don't come in anything that you could read outside the game. While guitar technique and muscle memory can definitely be learned through that kind of process, it's not going to train you how to, to read music or how to improve your music away from the game, which uh, you could say was going to limit the amount of skill building that's, that you can actually transfer seamlessly into real life. Now I say all of that as someone who's never played the game. I'm, I'm sure at some point I'm going to get myself a demo, you know, a free, free trial and play the, you know, the latest Rocksmith, but I never certainly never played the 2011 one, so I'm just saying this as an outside observer. So all that being said, while the Rocksmith model was definitely revolutionary, uh, there's plenty of room for competition. So what about the common people who aren't gamers, but would love to jump onto a game that helps them learn an instrument? Or what about the musicians who would like a practice tool, uh, but don't want to bother with all the baggage of a Fallout console game like Rocksmith? And that's where Ovalen came in. I don't know if I'm pronouncing their name right, but this was a music education company founded in 2010 which grabbed the concept of music education gaming and took it to its next logical step. The first sightings of what would later become Musician began in November 2011, when Ovalin released an iPad app called Wild Chords. Its release date was pretty close to Rocksmith, and Wild Chords uh, used the iPad microphone to listen to chords played on an acoustic guitar, no cable required, and uh, it was basically just a lightweight app for teaching children to play open chords. Children and new beginners, but it really appealed to children in terms of its graphical style and stuff like that. Uh, but it, it used the raw materials that would later lead on to the development of guitar bots and then of course eventually into musician. So what was Wild Chords, this, this long deceased ancestor of musician? Um, start off, I'll just give a quote from a news article on TechCrunch. Uh, here's how they described it. The gameplay itself is based on the Pied Piper of the Hamelin story so the user finds his or herself among a menagerie of animals that have recently escaped from the zoo. Each animal likes a particular chord, so the object is to play all the chords correctly and save the animals and the city from madness. Doesn't that sound thrilling? You know. So it turns out a game consisted of playing the correct chord as your character in, in a 2D world as your character passes by the appropriate animal for that chord. And if you're interested in seeing the game in action, uh, one of the developers actually showcased the game on Vimeo, and you can still access the video. I'll put a link to that in the description if, you're, if you've got the historical curiosity like I do. And then, uh, according to the uh, World Summit Organization website, because they got a World Summit Award, uh, on that description they also say, For instruments like guitar, the harmonics of the strings overlap in the audio spectrum, making individual chords difficult to identify. Unique Ovalin technology allows instantaneous recognition, critical for real-time gameplay. And that's the end of the quotation. So apparently the design back at that point 
The design was kind of something of a breakthrough by being the first iPad app to cleanly identify chords through the built-in microphone. Something that we're used to now, but back then that was, that was kind of a big deal. A year later, in November 2012, Overland's next product, GuitarBots, was announced. And so whereas Wild Chords was an iPad app, GuitarBots was a, a browser tool for your computer. A browser game, really. You may have heard of GuitarBots. Uh, if you look up GuitarBots videos online, uh, you'll see something that you may find, find a little familiar. It looks a lot like Musician. You've got the bouncing ball, the left to right scrolling over bright color schemes, the use of tablature, and of course the original songs uh, in these kind of lighthearted cross-genre styles. And of course there were the robots themselves. In distinction from its predecessor, Wild Chords, also in distinction from its successor, Musician, GuitarBots had these interesting dancing musicians in the background, kind of in a Guitar Hero style. Except they weren't rock stars, they were these unique, never seen before, never before seen rockin' robots. GuitarBots was, a, was a, a very accessible practice aid for guitarists at various levels. Rather than being aimed at primarily at young children just learning their open chords, which is what Wild Chords was, and rather than being aimed at gamers who were completely new to guitar, which is kind of the, the rocksmith audience, I think. GuitarBots was uh, a free tool that ran as a browser app so that any guitar student could load it up and play a free tablature game online with their real guitar, basically to, to practice some sight reading. Uh, needless to say, people played it, and its target audience didn't have to pass the initiation ritual of purchasing that special adapter, getting the right video game console, and then buying the game. They just had to load it up in their browser and grab their guitar. Uh, the product would, would later be removed in 2014 and replaced with Musician, um, which would be a more follower, follower, but more of a learning platform for phones, tablets, and PC. And then when that transition would come, that would, with that would come the disappearance of the old rock and robots. Not only would it no longer have bots in the title, the robots and backgrounds would be removed, allowing it to be more streamlined and have a more educational flavor, with fewer distractions on the screen and a design more suitable for small phone screens. But I think the robots were, were kind of an amusing theme, and as somebody who never played guitar bots, I came into this, you know, this world when Musician came out. I never played the game, I, but I find them to be kind of intriguing as a forgotten creative element left behind in Musician's history. The bots do remain in one small way in Musician. You might remember the Musician song, I am a guitar bot. I guess this was carried over from guitar bots into Musician along with other familiar songs. What makes this song intriguing to me is that you could say the one singing the song, which would be your tablet or your computer, or you could say specifically it's the dancing robots in the background that are singing the song. They are actually, as, as the words say, they are guitar bots. And he says, I am a guitar bot, and it's true. He is a bot, completely mechanized and non-human. But the one playing the song, on the other hand, which is you, isn't a robot at all. So it's not true. I am not a guitar bot. And what makes this kind of intriguing to me is that it would seem that the goal of the game is for you to become a little more like a robot in terms of accuracy and precision, because the robots are never going to become like you in terms of humanness. You could say that the goal of Rocksmith, Musician, Simply Guitar, and all the rest of them has always been the same goal to help you become a little more like a robot in the best sense, because the robots are never going to become like you in the most important sense. Anyway, GuitarBots definitely gained its following. And then meanwhile, in October 2013, Ubisoft rebooted its Rocksmith product by releasing Rocksmith 2014, which I believe at that point already had a PC version. And just shortly after that, uh, next step, which, which is going to be our, our next next our part three of the series will be when Musician enters the gaming arena to replace GuitarBots with a more thoroughly educational, more standalone product. In part three, I'll discuss the release of Musician, and then it gets a little, little more uh, less of what I learned from Google searches and Wikipedia, and I talk a little more about my own initial reaction to it and some of the changes and improvements that have rolled out over the years.